So today we're talking about the Canon M50 and whether this camera is a good camera to get or not. If you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do camera reviews, filmmaking tutorials, and I also do some YouTube training. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like this video and you wanna see more content like this. All right, so the Canon M50 is one of those cameras that a lot of people are using, and it's one of those cameras that is very popular in the YouTube space. So I wanted to take it out and try this camera out. I'm typically not a Canon user, but I think that there is a place for this camera in the market. And with my time playing with it, I've really enjoyed my experience working with this camera. It's a cool little camera and it's priced super cheap so that you can get the entire like creator kit for $699 on B&H right now, which comes with the camera, the lens, the microphone and an SD card. So you're basically set up and ready to start shooting content. Now, as a YouTuber, what I would add to this kit would be a mini tripod, either a Joby Gorilla Pod or just like a $15 little mini tripod, and then you're set up and ready to start creating. And that's one of the really cool things about this camera is that it's priced very well. So before we get into talking details about this camera and my thoughts on it, let's see some of the footage that I shot while I was out at Joshua Tree today. There's definitely some really awesome features with this camera that make it really ideal for YouTube and for vlogging because first off, it's just super small. So the first thing when I started playing around with this camera, I just noticed how small it is and how it fits in your hand. But overall, this camera is kind of set up perfectly for vloggers. With the flip out screen, you can see yourself and then it also has amazing autofocus when you're shooting in HD. I don't typically shoot with Canon cameras. My go-to vlog camera has been the GH4, the GH5. I've done Sony's, I did the A6500 for a little while. I've also done the A7S too. So I've had a whole range of cameras that I've used for vlogging, but I feel like this camera is definitely set up for YouTubers. So let's talk about autofocus for a minute. And that's one thing that YouTubers in general need, especially when you're shooting this kind of content. So when you're moving around, when you're, you know, talking to camera, you want a camera that's able to quickly find you and focus on your face. And that's something that other cameras struggle with. And my GH5 is plagued by awful autofocus when it comes to this style of content. So when I'm moving this around, it has face detect on and it's gonna always snap onto my face, which is amazing for creators. And just in general, the autofocus snaps pretty quick on this camera. I'm shooting at an F2 right now, so it's as shallow as this lens can get. And it snaps and grabs my face and then it holds focus. There's no hunting of the focus back and forth. It's gonna keep you in focus the entire time. And that's kind of a really cool feature. Now today I've been shooting a lot of auto just because I wanted to shoot this camera in a way that a lot of people will end up using it. So if you're shooting YouTube content, and if you're vlogging, if you're just kind of on the go, you'll most likely just throw it in auto just to get the shot so you know it's exposed right, it's in focus. And so when I've been shooting today, I've been shooting completely in auto mode. I have played around with manual mode as well because you know you just wanna see the different ways in which to use this camera and what kind of footage you can get out of it. In general, I've been super impressed with how this camera responds to exposure, how the colors look. Woo, it's windy. And just in general, how the whole experience has been working with it because half the battle when it comes to working with a camera is enjoying the experience of actually working with that camera versus just having all the bells and whistles in the world. It's pretty simple in terms of how you use the menu systems, how you access everything on the camera, and it's just an easy experience to get the shots that you wanna get. Whether you're doing photography or whether you're doing video, it's very easy to just get into the settings you need, you know, turn on things like focus peaking if you're using manual focus. Like, it's really easy to go in and out and grab the different things that you need, and the buttons on the camera itself give you enough flexibility where you're not fumbling around if you need to change settings while you're out in the field. 
All right, so all this footage I shot at 1080p, 60 frames a second, 30 frames a second, and then I shot some at 720p, 120 frames a second. I didn't really shoot much at 4K because I don't think this is a 4K camera. Okay, so I just wanted to show you with the crop, this is 4K footage, same settings, I'm using auto, using autofocus, all that, and you can just see how much it struggles to maintain focus, hold focus, and just how bad the crop is overall. So this is definitely not a strength of this camera at all. Also beyond the autofocus, the crop, just everything that's not going well right now with the 4K, you have some crazy jello effects. So you really see that like wobble and it's just something that is not very good. You don't wanna see this jiggle, this wobble. It's something that just makes your footage look that much worse, especially when you're hand holding like this just has like a weird jello effect. Not good, not good at all. Definitely uh, not the strongest 4K camera. It definitely has the ability to shoot 4K footage, but this camera is definitely a 1080p camera. The features that you want to use are all gonna be found in 1080p, and then the only exception is super slow motion, which is at 720p. If you need 4K for a project, you have it in this camera but it's only at 24 frames a second. You don't get 30 frames a second. And then also the 4K footage is cropped. So you're not getting the full width of your sensor. It's a selling point of this camera. You get 4K for this cheap, but honestly, I wouldn't use it if I was shooting with this camera on a day-to-day -day basis. So my buddy John uses the Canon M50 for all of the content that he shoots. So I wanted to get his opinion on why he likes this camera so much and give you guys another perspective on this camera to see if it's something that you wanna use for the videos that you're producing. Thank you, Jevin. I've had the M50 for 10 months now, and let me say, upgrading from the tiny point-and-shoot camera that I had for the first two years of my YouTube career, this has been a game-changer for me. For one, it's small, it's compact. It's just one pound. I can take it anywhere in the world and it's not gonna bother my back when I've got a backpack on. Uh, number two, it has an interchangeable lens and I can use that. I'm using an 11 uh, 22 right now. So it completely changed up all the perspectives that I could have uh, while I'm filming. And third, I love the flip screen. I would never get a camera that does not have a flip screen where I can adjust myself and set up shots just right. For me, the Canon M50 is the best portable vlogging camera. Thanks a lot, Jevin. So guys, I highly suggest you head over to John's channel, Here Be Bar, and check out some of his videos that he's created using the Canon M50. So now I'm just using the microphone on the camera and just some available light. Obviously it's super bright back here with the pier, but I'm just using some lights in the parking lot. And I'm shooting at 1600 with a 2.0 aperture. So you can see that you can get a nice looking image at night. You just have to have some available light. Let's talk about low light on this camera. So this is not gonna be like a super low light camera. However, you could shoot up to 1600 ISO or around 3200 ISO before the image starts getting too noisy and starts breaking apart. So you definitely can use this in more low light settings, but I would suggest if you're going to use this in those kind of settings that you get a fast lens. The, the 22 F2 is a great option. There are some other prime lenses for this camera that shoot at wider apertures, which allow you to shoot in these more low light settings. But having a camera that shoots at 1600 or 3200 gives you some flexibility so you are able to shoot in darker situations or if you're shooting at night and there's some lights kind of in the place that you're shooting. Guys, if you wanna know more about how to shoot at night with little to no noise and just get a good image when you're shooting at night, I have a video all about that and it works with any camera, not just cameras that are super sensitive to low light. It, it just takes knowing which settings you need to use and just kind of the situation you need to be in to be able to get a decent shot at night. But I'm definitely impressed with this camera and the footage that I've been getting out of it and it's been holding my focus as I'm you know, walking and talking with the gimbal. It's actually nice with this little gimbal. Maybe a little bit wider lens, but uh, you know, this 22 is not bad. Now let's talk about stabilization because this camera does not have any sort of in-body stabilization. And that is one of those things that people really want out of a vlogging camera nowadays. Personally, I don't have any issues not having stabilization in the camera because when I'm out there shooting with like a Joby tripod, 
The, the footage has a little bit of shake, but overall it looks good. All right, so I'm back in Santa Monica and I'm doing another test, just hand holding without like the Joby tripod. So I just wanted to do another kind of like vlog test how you would use this camera. I'm using a 22 millimeter lens. I'm just extending the arm out and pretty harsh lighting conditions here. So, you know, you got the bright sunset, the sun is setting over there and you got kind of dark on that side. So I want to see kind of how you know, it handles the footage in these kind of like mixed settings and then also just vlogging with the hand instead of using like the stick, which it actually is not that hard to hold because it is so light. And then if you want to get more like cinematic looking footage, I highly suggest just using a gimbal. Now, because it's so small, you can use smaller gimbals. So I've been playing around with the Fiutech G6 with the Canon M50. This is geared towards like smartphones and like GoPros and much smaller like point and shoot cameras. But this camera works on this gimbal and it works great. So having a smaller camera allows you to use smaller gear and it basically makes your entire package much smaller. So if you need stable footage, you're gonna need to use a gimbal. You're not gonna be able to handhold this without having some shake. However, for vlogging, for you know talking to camera style footage, you're still gonna get good footage if you have something like a Joby tripod or like a little mini tripod. And partly because it is so light that you're not gonna shake it around so much when you're holding it out, getting your shot. Now, one more note about the screen beyond the touch screen. I just like the fact that the screen is so big and obviously it's a flip screen so you can see yourself when you're filming. It's very easy to see what you need to see and it just, it looks very good. However, when it comes to the eyepiece, this is something that I think struggles on this camera. There's a lot of times where I like looking through the eyepiece because I'm outside, it's bright sunlight or I'm shooting like photography and, and I wanna be able to see my image in that little screen where you put your eye up to it. And one of this camera's strengths is that it's so small, but because it's so small, it's hard to really get your face onto the eyepiece and you kind of have to like push yourself sideways to be able to get a clear shot of the eyepiece. And also when you're looking through it, it's a little bit small. So I definitely think when you're using this camera, you're gonna be using the flip screen and that's gonna be your main source when you're actually out there shooting. Now, you, you obviously will want to use the eyepiece for different situations, but it's much harder to use. So I think that's one of the things that's not very good about this camera. Now for me, this is not a camera that I would use now. However, if I was just starting my YouTube channel right now, like when I started my YouTube channel, Three years ago, this is the camera that I wish I had when I started because it allows you to use the auto. You don't have to focus so much on the camera itself and you know you're gonna get some good footage out of it. However, when you're ready to take that step and get more manual controls, then you have the options within this camera. All right, so now that I've given you kind of the overview of the Canon M50, I'd love to know what you guys think about this camera. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. But honestly, I think that this camera is set up perfectly for people who are getting into YouTube who haven't actually worked with a DSLR or mirrorless camera before. It's a great introduction into the world of this style of creating content because it gives you an easy way to access everything that you need on one of these cameras and be able to start learning the manual controls but also have awesome ability to use the auto controls. So if you're someone who's using like a smartphone right now and you're looking to step up your game and make better looking content, then definitely the Canon M50 is the next step up in the chain of cameras that I would say you should get because it's a step up from fixed lens cameras. You can use different lenses on this camera and you have a bigger sensor so you can start getting more cinematic footage and you don't have to work as hard to get things like shallow depth of field and all of that. You have the ability to plug in a microphone and you just have a very well-rounded camera for content creators. So I definitely see that this camera is set up for YouTubers, for people who wanna self-produce, create their own content. Like I said, it's just a well-rounded camera. There's a lot of awesome features and it's not crazy expensive, especially when you start adding lenses and everything else to it. It's a fairly cheap camera. So it's a great introduction into this style of camera. All right, guys, that is it. If you're new here to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of awesome filmmaking tutorials, camera reviews. Like I said earlier, I also do a lot of YouTube training. So if you wanna learn how to grow your channel and be more successful on YouTube, make sure you head down to the description, check out the Creator Film School. You can check out my courses that are all about how to be a full-time creator and build your following so you can start making more money doing the things that you love. All right guys, that is it. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.